has another Russian charitable organization been revealed as a front for the FSB? Just how obvious was Russia being with this one? Plus, did the U.S. quietly shift their policy on strikes within Russia again? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it both. So this is a story uh, that originally came from actually The Guardian, and this reveals that a Russian... I guess a legal defense fund uh, in the EU apparently was a front for Russian intelligence. And FYI, once you see the name of it, you'll be like, yeah, is this surprising to anyone? According to this, this is a uh, Russian state affiliated legal defense fund uh, that called itself, quote, the fund for support and protection of the rights of compatriots living abroad. Now, you might remember that Putin, as part of his larger sort of Rusky Mir project, uh, is trying to expand the definition of who's Russian to include not just individuals who hold Russian passports and live in the Russian Federation, but to include almost all Russian speakers around the globe. And that's part of, again, his objective of expanding the scope of Russia, creating a sphere of influence and dominance um, that Putin believes reflects the historic Russian empire. Uh, um, of course, uh, Ukrainians uh, are in this historic Russian empire, uh, as are Poles, Lithuanians, Estonians, a lot of people who, if you ask them, they'll tell you we're not Russian, we're our own country. Uh, but part of this objective is to create these kind of legal defense funds uh, to create the illusion or the facsimile that there is some kind of broader Russian speaking, uh, community globally. Right now, What's interesting is that the foundation was actually found to finance propaganda websites aimed at Europeans and f most damningly helped pay the legal defense fund of convicted arms trafficker, Victor Bao and an assassin named Vadim Krasikov, right? Krasikov, you might remember from 2019, killed a, the a Chechen uh, opposition dissident, I think in Berlin. Uh, so is a true proper international assassin. And Victor Bout, the so-called Lord of War, uh, uh, an, uh, an absolutely prolific arms dealer who funded conflicts across the globe. Uh, you might remember that he was uh, exchanged in a prisoner exchange for a WNBA player who was held in Russia. Russia, uh, I think, last year. Now, what's most interesting is that according to some of these leaked documents, the group has spent millions of euros to finance propaganda and legal campaigns. Uh, public data also shows that many of these, uh, many European states actually spent their own tax money subsidizing this organization and its local subsidiaries, right? Because they're they're nonprofits, guys. They're just here to benefit such oppressed Russians as noted arms dealers and assassins. God bless it. There's something just extra, extra just like the most EU thing of all, that they gave tax breaks to Russian propaganda arms. Now, what's interesting is that when they looked at the staff, it turns out that basically it's staffed almost entirely by Russian intelligence agents, right? Uh, these include former uh, agents for with SVR, and uh, I, I think SAR is like an uh, uh, another FSB or an FSB subsidiary. But the takeaway, what I thought was most interesting from this whole report, um, is that many of the things they fund, in addition to these legal defense funds protecting and giving credence to um, Russian intelligence operatives, is that they also funded a number of websites that were meant to influence European politics. For example, this one, golos.eu, which is still online. And one, this thing looks janky as all, as all get out. Um, but... What it really is fascinating tells us that what Russia wants the world to believe, right? This is a chance for Russia to take all the things that it wishes it could it could influence the world, all of its messages, and sticks them in one place, right? Because we know this is funded by the Russian uh, Russian influence operations, right? 
And so you can see, one, there's a lot of these weird talking head videos. Um, a lot of the, the, the statistics doing, um, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, social proof, right, is what's called in advertising. When you're like thousands of other people, and I, 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 you know, I, listen, I'm guilty of it, right? I, I tell anybody that'll ask that Strike Gum has sold over 5,000 individual orders, that we have 20% of people reorder. I, I love sharing those stats, but the difference is, is that Strike Gum, you actually get what you pay for. I own it. This is my company. It's made in the USA. It's made by Liquid Core out in Denver. You can literally go visit them, right? 90 milligrams of caffeine in every piece, 100 milligrams of alpha GPC, the equivalent of an energy drink in every piece. It's easy. I don't have to, like... The social proof does itself. That's why we have all of these five-star reviews on Amazon and a bunch of five-star reviews on our own site. So it's it's easy. You should check it out, strikegum.com uh, or go to Amazon and just search Strike Gum. And if you can, leave us a review. Um, it, you know, those five-star reviews help tell customers on Amazon that we're the real deal, made in the USA, uh, natural caffeine, high quality ingredients. We're not the dehydrated, encapsulated, lab made stuff that is manufactured overseas and sold on Amazon. So, thanks, thanks to all you guys. But the point is, is that social proof does actually work, right? And you see how they brag. They're like, "We are in social networks," which is not really the English language phrase. Um, and look at all the followers we have. FYI, guys, you can buy followers. Russian botnets are notorious, right? And you see that a lot of these stories are pretty boring. European propagandists accuse the e Ukrainian opposition of working to split the EU. But you notice here, they say European propagandists fed by George Soros, which shout out to George Soros for feeding them. That's really nice. It's nice to share food. Have united in a campaign to destroy the last independent media. Wow. They accused the publication of Golos.eu conducting an influence operation. Okay. Well, you could, it, this is fascinating because it tells us some of the things that other propaganda might have. You notice they're uh, throwing out there uh, that it's George Soros's fault, um, right? Uh, Golo exists through advertising, right? Uh, for example, all of these ads, which are, maybe this is an ad. Oh, no, here we go. I see it says advertising, but then the only ad is their own website, their own Facebook page. So this is not, this is not that great, right? As you can see, media, they're campaigning against golos.eu, the last independent fund. Yeah, this is just classic, uh, right? Here's another example where they, uh, Governor Kim, I think this is a um, allegations of corruption and fraud uh, against a it looks like a construction. Uh, oh, a defense, a defense construction company. Um, but you see how it's about Ukrainian corruption is a huge emphasis here, um, right? The uh, there's also like quasi true um, spin doctor stuff, right? Where you see oh the Ukrainian president's office. One, it also bothers me. There's a norm for English language headlines where everything is capitalized except for things like of and. I, um, but basically every other word is supposed to be capitalized and they don't seem to do this. Right. So the fact that this is so bad, right? Like, let's see, here's, here's, let's see if we can find Washington post. See here, see, oh, oh, I can't show you because it's paywalled. You idiots. Um, uh, maybe I can do the guardian. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, of course. Here's the guardian, right? Notice revealed Russian legal foundation. Oh, interesting. Link to Kremlin activities in Europe. Huh? Okay. Maybe that changed since I was a kid. All right, never mind. Never mind. I guess this is properly capitalized. God, I'm so old sometimes. But you can see that it takes something real, which is, hey, the 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 Ukrainians are introducing better accountability for people who evade conscription. And it's emphasizing it's like it's like doing lie adjacent things, right? Um, we'll bring the men home by force, right? targeting foreign accounts of Ukrainians, right? 
And you notice that the article itself is really thin, really light. Um, the, and it's just quoting, like, it, well, they don't really quote it. They said several... Uh, they say reference to several sources at once. And then there's an unattributed quote. This is being done to ensure the men return to their homeland. If ignored, property will be confiscated. So you can see that Ukrainian corruption is a, and demoralizing Ukrainians living abroad uh, and creating a sense that Ukraine is also a corrupt country. This is all kind of essential to like the Russian propaganda experience. Um, but in good news, it seems like the Russian propaganda certainly hasn't worked in the United States, where you might recall the the Biden administration announced that, hey, they've allowed and have for almost a week or more uh, Ukrainian forces to use U.S. weapons to strike Russians who are massing immediately across the border, right, in order to thwart Russian attacks. And you can see that that's already happening with air defenses being reported activated in the Belgorod region. But here's what I found more interesting, right? Ukrainian military taking out an air defense complex outside Belgorod. But there was a question yesterday by the Institute for the Study of War about U.S. policies outside of Sumy. Sumy is a different region. You can see the city here where there was rumors that Russia was preparing another invasion force, hoping to take advantage of what it, 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 it believes is a gap in U.S. policymaking uh, where the strikes were only authorized locally in Kharkiv. So Russia was like, quick, let's go assemble an invasion force in Sumy. But it appears that the U.S. and Ukrainians did a little bit of a bamboozle because Ukrainian defense forces smoked a Russian military column inside Kursk. Kursk Oblast, right, is the Russian oblast. So on the Russian side of the border, the Russians seem to be behaving, launching a column as though they were totally safe. And the Ukrainians decided, nah, we're going to let them know that they're not. And so the Ukrainians went out there and deleted that column. So it's a sign, again, that all the propaganda, all the spin in the world, uh, even the cringiest of the cringe, like we just saw today, uh, isn't a substitute for military victory. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Thank you so much to the Colonel Tier members, the Lieutenant Tier members, and all the members of CombatVetNews.com. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.